How about finding a song in your valley? Right. Amen. Come on. Because see, that's whenever the enemy expects your faith to fail. Yeah. Amen. Hey, he he don't expect you to your faith to fail when you're on the mountaintop. Right. Because you got the victory. Come on. Everything's going good. You just got to raise at work. Right. Amen. The wife's treating you good. The husband's treating you good. Whichever one you are. Yeah. Husband or wife, one of you's walking on the mountain, amen. You're all excited, things going good. Yeah. But whenever it, you know, a poor brother Mike, he lost his job. Two hours later, your daddy falls and breaks his back in three places. Mm. And all this happens in one day. Yes. Then the adversary says, Let's listen at him now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what he's waiting on. Yeah. Let's listen to him now. He was singing the victory when he got his raise. He was singing the victory when he wasn't sick. He was singing the victory when he was walking on cloud nine. Let's see how he sings now. <laughs> That's what he's waiting on for Paul and Silas. There's a loud mouth Paul going around proclaiming about Jesus and all that stuff. Let's see what he does now. Paul looks over Silas and Silas looks over Paul and says, hey, that's saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Great is the Lord. I don't know what they sung. Yeah. Greatly to be praised, but they certainly had knowledge of the Psalms. It's probably one of David's songs yeah. that he wrote out there on the hillside while he's watching them sheep. Amen. Yeah. Well, David, the songs David wrote while he's out there in the valley right. watching them sheep. Amen. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Maybe they sung the 23rd Psalm. Right. My goodness. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He restoreth my soul. Maybe they sung, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Maybe that's what they sing. Oh, see, they sing a little different than we do. You know, we sing like, you know, he ain't ever done me nothing. But if you ever hear some of them Hebrew boys sing, it ain't exactly the same kind of melody that we've got. Amen? Right. They'll play it on that harp and they'll sing and it maybe don't sound like music to some people, but it is. Amen? Right. It is to God. It is, to, oh, it is to God. That's exactly right. Yeah. So they begin to sing. They found their song uh -huh. in prison. The difference in the way that we come out of the valley and the benefit that we get from it may depend upon whether we find our song while we're in the valley. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen to this. I'm fixing to close here in a minute. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> Finding a song in your valley. I know I keep repeating that, but it's on purpose. You will never find it until you first realize that just because you're in the valley doesn't mean you're out of God's will. Amen? You will never find it until you realize that it's not because of some reason that God is punishing you or that you're not getting God's best because of your lack of faith or your lack of positive confession. Amen? Amen. You will never find it. You will never realize it. You will never find your song in the valley until you realize that this did not come to stay, but it came to pass. Amen? If you do not realize that this is the trying of your faith and not the destruction of it, you will never find your song in the valley until you realize these things. Until you realize that He is not only God on the mountain, but He is God in your valley as well. Oh, you'll never find your song. But when you realize that the same God that you sang praises to when you was walking on cloud nine is the same God when you're walking through the valley, then you can find your song in your valley. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Until you realize that no matter what's going on in your life, yeah. The shepherd is with you. He's watching and he's working it out for your good. And when you realize those things, it ain't so hard to sit in jail at midnight and begin to sing, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. When he had tried me, I will come forth as gold. He's restored my soul. He's going to use me right here where I'm at. I'm going to find my song in my valley and I'm going to sing praises to God. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
When you realize these things, it's important. Listen to me. You'll never find your song in the valley until you realize that just because you're in the valley doesn't mean you're not in God's will. Amen. Amen. Right. We got this all messed up. We got people who saying God only wants the best for you. He never wants you to face anything. He never wants you to go through a trial. That's hogwash. Right. Amen. He wants to use the trials that you will go through to strengthen your faith. Right. So that you in turn can strengthen others. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The song we opened up with today, this valley is for me. You see, something else you have to realize in order to find the song in your valley, you have to realize that it is your valley. It didn't happen by chance. Amen. You're what I said. Yes, sir. God's ahead over all things. That's right. Amen. It's time we claimed our valley. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell the enemy, this is my valley. You shut up. Yeah. I'm going to get what God wants me to have out of this valley. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Israel's biggest victories was won in valleys. That's right. Amen. All the enemy, remember David and Goliath, they were in the valley right. when that battle took place. The enemy likes to step up, beat his chest, and say, What are you going to do? Right. But little David always had a song. Amen. Amen. Takes a sling and a stone. And brings him down. It's your valley. And in the beginning, God. Amen. And that there's nothing that He cannot see you through. Did you hear that this morning? Amen. It's your valley. Right. This valley is for me. The waters have been made so sweet. A place of rest for my weary feet. This valley is for me. Amen. The far cry from the mountain scene over the grass here has been made. So green. My shepherd chose this route and I can say without a doubt this valley is for me. Amen. When you realize, when you realize that, when you realize that singing is the last thing that the enemy expects you to do, he don't expect that. Amen. We play something on the radio station every December. It's called the Great Church Robbery. And it's a little comical story and it's based, at least it's parody to the Grinch. The man that lives next door to this church and their ringing bells gets on his nerves and their singing every Sunday gets on his nerves so he decides he's going to teach them. He goes into the church when nobody's there. He packs his old pickup up there and he loads up their song books and their Bibles and even the rugs off the floor. While he's doing that, a little girl comes in. He says, excuse me, sir, but what are you doing? And quickly thinking, you know, he thinks, I'll act like I'm a blind man. And he tells a little girl, he says, I've come because I want to bless this church. I'm taking out all the old stuff and I'm going to bring back some new things. And of course, the little girl, she believes him. And he turns to go away and the little girl says, before you go, can I pray for you? And before he can say no, the little girl walks over and puts her hand on him and says, Lord, give this man back his sight. He says, that's fine and that's good. He rushes on out there and he gets in his truck and he heads on up the mountain with all of the things, the hymnals, the songbooks, the Bibles, everything that was in the church that he thought caused them joy. He gets out there and he's going to throw it off the cliff. And he says, it's time for them to have their Sunday morning service. Let me see if I can hear them down there murmuring and complaining. He stands up there on the edge of the cliff listening to see if he can hear a song or anything coming from the valley. See if he can hear a noise. He hears a noise, all right. And the more it rises, the more clear it is. And he can hear him singing. Amazing grace, how sweet. And he's like, wait a minute. I took away their stuff. I took away all their things. Everything that I thought gave them joy. And then a light comes on and he thinks, maybe what, what gives them their joy is not a thing, but it's someone. Right. And he realizes that it can't take away the thing, the person that gives them joy. Oh, the valley can't take away the person that gives you joy. He's your shepherd. He's leading you through the valley. And that's your source of joy. Amen. So he hears them singing. 
And just that time, he notices the truck is knocked out of gear and it's about to go over the cliff. And he runs over there and he gets in front of it and he's trying his best to keep it from going over. And he prayed. He said, God, I've never prayed before. But please give me the strength to stop what I've started. I accept Jesus right now. And the story says he gained the strength of Samson and even more. And he pushes the truck back up and he jumps in and he goes down the hill and he gives them back all their stuff. And the little girl's prayer was answered because now this man who acted like a blind man, he was actually blind, but now he could see that their song did not depend upon things. If your song depends upon things today, you're in trouble because sooner or later things will run out. Amen. But when you're in the valley and you realize why you're there, who's there with you, what He can do with this situation, it's not that hard to find a song in your valley. My, my, my. One more Scripture. It ended about 26 verses. I ain't going to read it all to you. Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. The Bible talks about Jehoshaphat. <clears throat> King Jehoshaphat, I guess I should say. 2 Chronicles 20. And it goes down through, I think, 26 verses. Y'all can read that later. I'm going to hit over this and tell you what it was going on. It says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee, and beyond the sea of the side of Seir. And behold, they be in Hazan of Tamar, which is in Engadin. Now, Jehoshaphat's sitting here, and they come and tell him, Listen, there's a great army coming against you. And he realizes that there's no way that he can defeat, that even with the people that he's got, there's no way man to man Battle against battle. Strategy against strategy that he can win. So what's he do? He starts crying out to God. He begins to pray and say, Oh God, I know, and this is not word for word, but he prays things like, I know that you're still our deliverer. I know you didn't bring us this far to let us down. I know that you're still God. And he begins to pray. And he begins to seek God. Amen? Right. And listen to this. Drop down. Verse 15. You're probably not there, but anyway. In verse 15 it says, And he said, Hearken ye all of Judah. This is after his prayer. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The valley, see, is mine, but the battle is God's. Amen. There will be later time here, and I believe it's in the book of Joel, that he calls a place called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley was Jehoshaphat. The battle was God's. Amen. The sooner we realize, yeah, this valley is mine, but the battle is God's, the easier it will be for us to begin saying praises unto Him regardless of where we're at and what's going on. It's not my battle, it's His. That's right, man. And the Lord told them, the Lord told them, you ain't going to have to fight in this battle. That's the truth. That's our problem. We try to fight our way through our valley. We try to fight our way through the trial. We've tried to fight out against everything and it's not even our That's fight. Right, Verse 17 says, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Yeah. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Right. My goodness, have you found your song yet? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to this. Drop down to verse uh, 22. No, 21. And when he had consulted with the people, talking about Jehoshaphat, talking with the people, he appointed singers.